Hi there everybody, it's Noreen from Organized and Creative Mom. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am so excited about today's video because it is the second time I've had the pleasure of collaborating with two other amazing Creative Memories Advisor, Lauren Hines from Crafts and Joy and Kylie Kingham from Paper Sweet Pea. And I know that you enjoyed our last collaboration where we featured three different takes on the Welcome Home collection from Creative Memories. And your feedback was so great and we had so much fun doing it that we've decided to hop on and do another collaboration. And this time we are all using the beautiful new travel themed collection Wanderlust from Creative Memories. And we decided that we would also focus on incorporating some fun peekaboo pockets into our layouts as well. So I'm gonna flip you over so you can see what's on my table and what I'm going to create. And then of course, don't forget to head over to both Lauren and Kylie's channels to see their videos, watch what they create with the Wanderlust and Peekaboo Pockets. So all of the links will be in the description box below. Let's get started. Now I have really been enjoying using the Wanderlust collection. I was so thrilled to be asked by Creative Memories to do some of the marketing projects for the collection. So I have used it quite a lot. I'm down to just a little bit left, but I have some designer paper as well as some tone-on-tone -tone paper. And I do still have lots of embellishments, a few of the laser cut mats and variety mats, and still quite a few stickers. So I know that I'm going to have lots and lots to work with. I'm also going to be working with the Chevron Arrows Border Maker cartridge because I just love the way that that coordinates with this collection. And I'm going to be using two different sizes of peekaboo pockets on my layout. Sorry for the glare there. I'm going to be using a 6x12 and also a 4x6, the little vertical uh, style peekaboo pocket. So I'll show you those. I've got those here and I know they're difficult to see on camera, but they are just so fun to use and to make interactive layouts as well as being able to fit so many more photos onto your page. Now the photos that I'm gonna be working with are about my husband and one of his bucket list must ride motorcycle trips the Bear Tooth Highway in Montana and Wyoming in the United States. And so we did this trip as a family a few years back. Incredible, incredible scenery, um, high altitudes. It was snowing up there, even though we did the trip in midsummer. And he just so enjoyed the, the trip, being able to cross that off his bucket list. We started in Cook City and ended up in Red Lodge and it was just such a fun time. The boys and I were in the kind of the support vehicle behind, but he just had a wonderful time. So I definitely want to document that. And I have to say that from the moment I saw the Wanderlust designer papers, this particular photographic paper really struck me as something I would like to use with some of my husband's uh, motorcycle photos. And I hope it gives you a few ideas on how you could use it because I know that sometimes photographic papers can be uh, a little daunting. Sometimes we're not sure how we want to incorporate those into our scrapbook layouts when we typically use a lot more of the sort of pattern paper, cutting that into blocks, uh, using it to mat things, that sort of thing. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea. So besides this paper, I'm going to use um, one piece of the Tone on Tone, and this is kind of a red circular um, pattern. This is gonna be my base for my layout. I'm gonna incorporate this on top. So as you saw, I've already gone ahead and matted my photos, cut them down to size and matted them onto some charcoal cardstock. So they're all ready to go. And what I'm thinking of doing is basically using this paper as my main paper. And I think I'm gonna cut it down in half and use half inside the peekaboo pocket, still with photos on it, but it's going to open and reveal some of the red paper in behind. And then it's also going to have uh, the red pattern paper that's on the back side of this. 
Now for my title, I couldn't help but think that I have to incorporate this card somehow. And I love the way that it kind of looks like it's just uh, a little extension of this paper. So I thought that I would be adding this card inside the four by six peekaboo pocket, and it's gonna go on top of the layout and just kind of open this way. So that's the plan, but let's go ahead and uh, do some cutting along the sides. I definitely want to punch out some decorative edges with the Chevron Arrows Border Maker cartridge. And the fun thing about this is that it actually creates the decorative edge without cutting any of the paper off of the edge. So the edge or the whole paper will remain the same size and then the decorative um, punch will happen almost like a lace, sort of still attached. So let me show you what I mean by that because I don't know that I've explained it very well. I've just placed the edge of my paper into the paper guide. My border maker cartridge is inside the punch housing and I'm just going to go ahead and punch. So now I hope you can see what I mean by it leaves the paper edge intact and then it punches a design just slightly in, about a half an inch in from the edge of the paper. So it doesn't actually cut any of the paper off. I do want to hang on to all of the little chevrons and shapes that get punched out and I want to also punch the same kind of border on this side and since our arrows are going kind of down on this side I think I will turn my paper so that the arrows are going up on the other side. If you wanted to make your um, your two sides the same, just flip it over and that way the arrows will go in the same direction. But I'm going to have one side going up and one side going down. So I'm loving the way that that looks with my chevrons pointing down and up and again just really showing that red on the underside. So again, it's still a 12 inch wide page, even though I've punched out the two rows of chevrons, I'm now gonna go ahead and cut this paper in half. So I'm just gonna cut it right at six inches so that I have two halves of my paper and one half is going to go in the peekaboo pocket while the other half is going to get adhered directly to the base page. So one of the great things about using those peekaboo pockets is now we really have um, the full 12 by 12 paper, but we also have the inside of that paper to work on. So let's look at what we're gonna do on the front page first. So if we imagine that our paper is still intact, I mentioned that I wanted to use this as a title, matching up the lines, but that's going to go on last. I think that I'll probably use kind of my two sort of standout photos of Shane on his bike, these two four by fours on either side of the road. And then the um, this can just go on top. But I think I actually want to mat this, um, but I know that I can't make it any bigger than four by six, otherwise it won't fit into the four by six, six by four peekaboo pocket. But I think that that little bit of gray around the title card would work really well. So I'm just gonna trim it down just a touch and I'm going to use just these guidelines right here on my trimmer uh, to help me. So the first line that you see on the gray cutting mat is where the blade cuts, but the second one, which is the previous cutting line, that's about an eighth of an inch away. So if I cut at the eighth of an inch all the way around, I will have taken off a quarter of an inch and it should be really nice on the mat. So I'm just going to line up the edge of my mat card with that second dashed line and cut all the way 
around. So you can see that my matte card will just have that nice little edge around it and I still have that centered so that when I place it over top it's still going to be able to um, match up or, or meet with those extended lines on the base paper. So I think that's going to work really, really well. I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it and we can set that aside with the rest of the photos for now. So let's go ahead and adhere our two photos here. Just again, making sure that we're not blocking anything. And there we go. I think that's going to work beautifully. I think I might use some of these little red um, punch out parts for a little bit of extra sort of decoration and just to bring that same shape to my matte title. So I think I'll probably do something like that on both sides and then that will really work together. I'm okay with leaving a lot of white space up top here because I really like the look of that in terms of that becomes the scene and these photos sort of enhance the scene. Plus I know that I'm going to have the majority of the photos inside my layout. So if I imagine that I'm going to open up my six inch by 12 inch peekaboo pocket, this is the space that I still have available for all my photos and um, journaling, etc. Although I could definitely add another photo onto the back of this, or maybe that's where I will add my journaling. So I have a few different things here that I want to incorporate. There's the map of the Beartooth Highway. And you can see that the map itself has some empty space here. So I think it would be okay for me to layer over some of these photos. I'll tell you the sizes in just a second here and explain the story. So I think I'll do something like this. So this is a four by four photo um, of the map of the Beartooth. And I just, uh, I had a larger uh, map, but I decided to just print it out as a photo so that I can incorporate it a little more easily. And then these were two of the sort of stores in the very small town of Cook City where we started the Beartooth. Then of course we're traveling uphill and at the very top it was super cold. We had uh, snow, it was only about two degrees Celsius, super cold, super rainy. I was really surprised that Shane was able to continue. It was really poor, poor conditions. But so we've kind of got that idea of the story about driving up here we see again some of the conditions that were up at the very top. Snow on the ground, rainy, snowy, sleet uh, weather. But then as we started heading back down to uh, Red Lodge, which uh, this picture is of, uh, the, 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 um, the conditions were much, much better and I was able to get a couple of pictures. So of course I was driving the Jeep, so I had my phone set up in a, um, holder on my dash and I could just sort of tap it to take some pictures. So a lot of them were blurry, but I did manage to get this one of Shane actually rounding a corner slightly ahead of me and, um, you know, heading back down the, the Beartooth Pass. So and I like that arrangement, a little bit of interest there. These are three by threes and these ones are five by threes. And I chose that size because it just fits inside the um, sort of chevron area. Now I am going to see a little bit of uh, the photos that are underneath here when I close over this side on the in the peekaboo pocket, but I think that's going to be okay. So this is a really good arrangement. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these down. I have all of my photos adhered and I just was, you know, taking care to make sure that, you know, they were similarly spaced and, uh, you know, kind of evenly arranged because of course, when this flap is open with the peekaboo pocket, you'll be able to see all three panels like this. So you want to make sure that they work together quite well. And then as I was uh, adhering these, I realized that I really only have a couple of little spots for journaling. I thought I would have more. So I've gone ahead and done a couple of things. And I apologize that I did these off camera, 
my camera actually stopped so I was continuing to work without realizing that it wasn't recording but just off camera I went ahead and I added a few of these uh, little uh, chevron little punch outs that came uh, from the paper and they were a bit finicky but using my repositionable adhesive and my multi-purpose tool I was able to arrange them and then I decided that I would take another type of of um, journaling card and just attach it to the back. So now I have a nice surface where I can do all of my journaling and I don't have to worry that I don't have any space here. So this is now ready to go into the peekaboo pocket. I'm using the four by six size because I want it to open this way. I want it to be a flap that opens to the side. And the way that the peekaboo pockets work is that the adhesive flap is on the back side to where the pocket opens. So you can see that the opening is here. Just slide that in. My title card on the front and my journal card on the back. And uh, this flap has the adhesive on the back. So I'll just go ahead when I get it all into my uh, pocket protector and I'll be able to peel off that adhesive and stick it down. So I'm just gonna set that aside and let's talk a little bit about embellishing. Now again, there's quite a lot going on here, so I don't need too many embellishments. I did decide that when I have the entire layout closed and the title card is going to get lined up so that it looks like it's, you know, again, uh, equal to the lines on the road, I thought that adding this little open road sticker up on top of the peekaboo pocket would make a really nice addition. I like the fact that there's a fair amount of open space. That was part of what I really enjoyed about this particular paper was the scenic background. So I'm not going to add any other photos or embellishments up top there. Just that open road sticker, it'll kind of echo the uh, diagonal lines here and it'll also also uh, echo the triangle that I've got going from the two photos and the journal card and of course it will echo the red so I think that will work fine to finish off embellishing the front of the layout and then as for this inside part uh, I really think that I'm just going to add a few little stickers. I'm not even going to pop them up with foam squares because I don't want this to be really thick when I close the flaps. So as I'm looking through here, uh, definitely enjoying the view. Maybe that could go uh, up here. Kind of add that there. And I liked this compass because uh, even though it's, um, you know, not really standing out from the background here. I like that it just kind of fills that space and then maybe I could add um, camera. This has got snapshots and here's a little sticker with a camera. So I could just add that right in here. And then, oh, I definitely have to use the no speed limit. Uh, maybe that could go down here. Kind of connected to Shane actually riding his bike there. I like these little um, GPS sort of locator buttons. I think that would actually be a good thing. And you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to actually put it right on top of the photo here. We are here. So I've got kind of some arrows going, maybe some other arrow stickers would be a good addition. I could just add these right in here and maybe over here as well. So again, our arrows are just kind of uh, repeating throughout. So I think that really might be about all I want to add in. I've got a couple of different patterns going here. I've got the decorative edging. I've got some repeating arrows, and then I have lots and lots of photos there. So I think that would be 
quite enough. So let's go ahead and get a page protector to slide this all in and see how the final layout looks. I've got my top loading page protector here and of course they have a 12 by 12 inch cardstock inside there so I always take that out and keep it for another use. And then let's go ahead and place this one inside our 12 by 12, our large pocket. So that's going to be there. And then let's get out our 6 by 12 peekaboo pocket. I'm going to slide this inside. So now we can see it all coming together. And again, my idea for this layout was really to preserve that scene uh, from the photographic paper. And I'm sorry for the glare there, but you can see it a little bit better there. Uh, but was to preserve the scene that we saw on the paper, but still give me enough space to tell the rest of the story. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and what I'm gonna do is fold it backwards and then I'm going to actually adhere it to the back side of the page protector. So just peel off the strip. Again, it's a, uh, transparent as well, so it might be a little bit difficult to see. Make sure that I'm lined up nicely at the front. And then I'm just going to fold this around the back so that again, when it opens up, it will be all lined up. And thankfully, you can have a bit of wiggle room if you need to adjust. So that looks great. And then I can go ahead and add this peekaboo pocket here. I think that looks pretty good. And I just like to kind of take my multi-purpose tool and really make sure the adhesive is attached really well, kind of almost burnishing it. And that will take out some of those little air bubbles that, that you do see as well. So you can't even really see where the uh, adhesive is. But that's the way my page comes together. As I mentioned, I want to add that just in there as well. I might need to just put a little bit of uh, cardstock maybe on the back there so that it doesn't stick down. But I love the way that that turned out and I really, really enjoyed creating that page with those peekaboo pockets. I just love that Wanderlust collection. I think it's so fantastic that you can use it for such a wide variety of travel adventures, whether it's a motorcycle trip on the Beartooth Highway or a European cruise, there seems to be something for every type of travel adventure in this collection. So I know you're going to enjoy it. And I really hope that if you haven't played with the Peekaboo Pockets that you give those a try as well because they are so uh, fun to work with and fun for the viewers of your albums. It makes for a nice interactive component. So well. don't forget to head over to Lauren and Kylie's channels so that you can see what they've been up to. Again, I'm gonna have all of the links in the description box down below. We want to hear from you. We want your, your feedback on this particular collaboration and we're kind of wondering if you might want to see something from us, uh, maybe a special event or a special type of uh, collaboration for National Scrapbook Day, which is of course is coming up within the next couple of months. Creative Memories just launched their National Scrapbook Day products. Lauren and Kylie and I were talking about them, but we'd love to hear from you as to what you might want to see from us. So now don't forget that if you are in the US, please head over to Lauren's uh, Creative Memories website to purchase your Creative Memories products and perhaps join her team. If you're down under in Australia, definitely go over to Kylie's website 
to purchase your Creative Memories products from her and join her team. And if you're up here in the Great White North with me in Canada, I would love for you to purchase from my Creative Memories website. I'd be happy to invite you to my Canadian VIP group. And of course, I'd love to chat with you if you want to become a member of my Coast to Coast Croppers Creative Memories team. Don't forget to like the videos and make sure you comment on all three of them and make sure you subscribe to all three of the channels as well so that you don't miss any other collaborations, any other videos that the three of us do. We hope you've enjoyed this time around with Scrap With Me times three and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye for now.